Hi everyone, I trust that everyone is well today. I am Coach Keon Smith from Action Coach Guyana. And today I have the pleasure of having an interview conversation with Ms. Uh, Shelly Manohar from Target Logistics Inc. Hi, uh, Shalima, welcome to our interview. How are you doing today? Hi, Coach Keon. I'm fantastic today. Excellent. Thank you for asking. Thank you very much. So first of all, I think the persons out there may just want to know, you know just a little bit about who is uh, Shalima Nohar, if you can just give us that in just about 30 seconds. Shalima Nohar is a purpose-driven mother and entrepreneur. Wow. I take pride. I take pride in growing myself. And as a result of that, I can be the best mom possible and also the best team leader. One of my core values is to leave a legacy for myself, my family. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Shreema. That was well said and excellent use of time. Now, Target Logistics Inc., uh, we're hearing the company's name. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the company, what it does? Just give us that little brief bio. Target Logistics is a full service shipping company. It was founded a little over 12 years ago as a sole trader establishment where we serve the personal customers. We got incorporated in 2018 after a really big collaboration and we were able to secure our warehouse partner in Miami, thereby allowing us to serve a wider population in Guyana. We are now, in addition to serving personal shoppers, we are now serving the serving corporate Guyana. We move ocean cargo, we move air cargo. And one of the biggest reasons why our customers love us is because we offer a personalized consolidation service and our customers are able to rely on us because we provide honest and timely updates. Wow, that sounds definitely sounds like one of the also yeah, and the door to door delivery is another reason why they love us. Beautiful. So from providing excellent service to make sure that you have honest uh, follow up and feedback, I think that's really really important. And persons receiving their packages in their uh, convenience, I think that's really really good as well. So congratulations on that. Uh, can I just ask you, uh, Shalima? What has been your biggest learning uh, from the time that your business would have started 12 years ago uh, to date? The biggest thing I've learned from then to now is that I'm not an island. I thought I was. When I operated as an island, I also operated as that hamster on the wheel, round and round and round. And the moment I let someone in and I release I release some personal power, I would say, and allowed somebody else to hold me accountable. I was able to, to grow as a person and the business took off from there. So that's it, not operating as an island. Excellent. And in your in your response just now, you indicated, you know, releasing that personal power and having someone hold you accountable. Can you just shed some more light on that so our uh, listening and viewing audience can understand what you mean? I mean, my, my, my personality is that I don't like to be told to do things. I like to do things my way. And I... There are things that I don't know that I don't know. And now I'm aware of the things that I don't know. So I'm in the process of learning that. And there are aspects of business that I am not, are not my strong points. And there are aspects of running the business that I am top in. Excellent. So once I was able to not identify, because I knew, accept it. Because somebody else pointed it out. And another thing is numbers don't lie. At the end of the week, at the end of the month, when you run a report and you've been working so hard all week and all month and the numbers are not what you want it to be, oh. you got to accept, I had to accept that I need to let somebody to come in to assist with the finances, 
somebody to come in to assist with the organization because those are two areas that I really need improvement on. My strengths are sales and marketing. I can I can speak, I can promote. And those are areas that I, you know, I excel in. So that's those what you mean me saying that I had to release personal power is letting somebody in who I want to listen to. Because I don't always listen to a lot of persons. Excellent. Uh, that was very, very important. And coming out from uh, your statement just now, numbers don't lie is very important for us to make sure that we are tracking those numbers uh, within our business so that we can make uh, informed decisions. Now, uh, you've been in business for 12 years, and uh, for some, that might be a very long time, but I believe a good enough time to provide you with a good foundation for the next five years. Mm -hmm. So my question is, Shelly, where do you see Target Logistics Inc. in the next five years? That's an excellent question, Coach. It's excellent because in our team meeting this morning, I shared, I reshared our goals because we have a new team member. And mm -hmm. the biggest thing that I said to him that wowed him was that Target Logistics wants to be in six continents of the world in five years saying it i feel i if you notice i spoke slowly because i am scared <laughs> i am scared however that's where we're going and that's what we want to do we want to be able to connect guyana to the globe we want to be the go-to the solution for logistics in guyana Excellent. Uh, I love that tagline, connect uh, Guyana to the globe. And if what you're planning to do, your goals, if they don't scare you or make you super excited, then they're not strong enough. And the goals that can make you both <laughs> super excited and scared at the same time, it means that you are you know, setting what we call the BHAG, which are big, hairy, audacious goals. So Congratulations on... I remember learning that from my road to grow training that you facilitated. Yes, yes. It's very, very important to keep those goals in mind and plan towards uh, getting them done. Now, as you're growing as a leader, there are things that you would learn from business itself. What have you learned about yourself um, being in business for the past uh, 12 years? What I've learned about myself being in business for the past 12 years is yes. that I rely on, not what I rely on. I had to learn to write things down because I think I know. For example, last night in my quiet time, I thought of at least six or seven things. I had nothing to write, not. I nothing to write them down on and I don't remember. I need to write things down to refer and also to follow a calendar. This morning we were planning our team social and I was the last person to consult my calendar for the proposed date. And this I'm supposed to be the first one. <laughs> Because my calendar is supposed to be so packed. I am a Toastmaster. I am the area director for, for an area in Toastmasters. I'm a mom. I have so much obligations. And I need to, I had to learn to write things down, scheduling and follow a calendar. And the other thing is that accountability. I'll always come back to accountability because when I was not accountable to anybody, yeah. the business was not growing. My okay. parents never asked me or they never got involved in the business because they trusted me but I didn't know what I didn't know so once I realized that th like the biggest thing I, I had to really overcome was to let actually there were only two persons who could really tell me who have given permission what to do in business and you're one of them the other person is Dr. Durgo everybody else could speak unless i am ready to receive that information then i wouldn't listen That's it. Um, i quite i quite understand um Shari, and accountability is definitely a major part in growing yourself and your business now we've spoken about where you want to go and i'm sure over those 
12 years, there may have been a various challenges that you may have had to overcome. What would you say was your most significant challenge that you've had to overcome in doing business for the past 12 years? That's a hard question. I thought I knew the answer to that, but now that you're asking me, mm -hmm. it's it's hard to verbalize. And I will I will have to come back to let getting help. Mm -hmm. It is easy for me to ask for help now. I never asked for help before. Now, if I am considering a solution to a challenge. Yeah. I will either reach out to you or go into my coaching group or my circle of friends who I trust and run something by them. Before, I thought I knew. So really, really being able to ask for help and receive feedback and really work on the areas that I know that I need to improve myself in. Because as a mom too, my son is watching. I don't know he's watching. He doesn't know he's watching, but he would say some phrases that comes out of my mouth. When I hear him say it, and I mean, I, I must admit sometimes it, it they're, they're, they're a bit rude. And when it comes out of his mouth, I'm like, wait, he heard that from me. Yeah. And yesterday I was talking to my father on the phone and my father was relaying an experience that he had in his life. And daddy was telling me about somebody who was not good to him and somebody, and he also remembered that they did something really good. So he was telling, the point of the whole thing was that daddy said, you have to forgive and remember all the good things that somebody would have done. And I am trying to remember, if do I do that with my son? Do I say those things? You know, so it's really me being a better person. Excellent, excellent. It's always good to uh, strive to improve yourself and to be a better person than you were yesterday. And uh, your son probably is your accountability partner in that. So when you hear his phrases, you're reminded every day to improve who you are. Check myself. Yourself. Excellent. Now, as we're wrapping up, is there, if you had to give, uh, probably maybe two pieces of advice to anyone who is getting into business. Uh, what would those two pieces of advice be? And can you share those with us? For anyone who wants to get into business, you have to document your business, document your plan, have a plan, plan it. It could be really good. It could be really bad. Plan it and run some numbers. Plan how you are going to market, where, you can, where are you going to get finances from, how are you going to get to your customers, how are your customers going to get to you, how are you going to receive your payments, how are you going to pay your bills. Get right down your business plan. And the second thing, if you can't afford a mentor, ask for a free mentor. <laughs> there are lots of persons out there who are willing to help. They're willing to, to help. All you have to do is be, be able to listen. Like I have a friend who has all of the information. I will not call her name. My other friends who are listening to this will know exactly what I'm talking about. She has all of the information, all of the networks, and she listened to none. And right now she's in a position where if she had only implemented five things that she learned, her business would have catapulted however it's not so a mentor somebody who is going to give you honest feedback and honest areas that you can work on to grow your business so business plan mentor excellent thank you very much Ashley for uh, bringing that thought to us to make sure you have some business plan document your business and of course to get a mentor uh, someone who can provide you with honest uh, feedback. So that brings us to the end of our interview. It's been a pleasure having a conversation with you. And I wish yourself and Target Logistics Inc. 
all the best as you continue to grow and to make your mark uh, in the industry. Thank you very much for having me, Coach. Excellent. Have a good one.